Hi everyone, hope you guys are all having a great day today. And in today's video, I'm gonna cover the whole entire market in terms of Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and S&P 500, including the economic calendar. Now I do post these videos up daily, so I highly encourage you to double check the latest video on my channel, so that way you get the most up-to-date information. And before I get to the charts, I'm gonna go over the economic calendar. And one thing to note as well is that there is continuation of the tensions in the Middle East. And then for the end of the week of this week, so for Thursday and Friday, we have CPI inflation numbers and PPI inflation numbers. This is to be mindful that the market could take this data and interpret it of how big of rate cuts could be coming from the Fed. Now, the Fed stated that there are more rate cuts coming, but again, this data helps us in terms of the market assess how big they could be potentially, just basically estimating. And uh, so for Monday, October 7th, 2024, at 1 p.m., we have Fed Governor Michelle Bowman speak. And then at 3 p.m., we have Consumer Credit for September. And at 6.30 p.m., we have St. Louis Fed President Alberto Musalam speak. So looking at the market, it looks like we actually might be reversing to the upside and then continuing to the upside to retest the S&P and Dow Jones all-time highs and then NASDAQ upward trend resist level dating back since 2010. We're getting at important levels overall. So even though we're reversing to the upside, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be easy to pass these levels, but the momentum seems like it might not be too difficult. So to show you what I'm looking at is here's NASDAQ looking at ETF QQQ, ETF for NASDAQ. We have an upward trend resistance level dating back since 2010. Mind you, the market was still going up. It just had issues clearly to pass this upward trend resistance level. It did break through in 2020 to 2022, came back underneath it, had issues passing it again, and then did bounce off as support, by the way, when it was above it. Um, but also in July of 2024, the whole entire markets in terms of Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and S&P did have all-time highs in July. So I'm going to zoom in and show you right here. So it passed the 2010 all-time highs. Now the S&P and Dow Jones retested their all-time highs back in July and did pass the all-time highs in July, except the NASDAQ did not. In the meantime, the Nasdaq was having issues once again, passing the upward trend resistance level this, dating back since 2010 and uh, had false breakouts predominantly in the pre-market and then false breakouts again here, predominantly in after hours in pre-market and then had issues once again, testing it. You can see two clear touch points. Now, in my opinion, if the reversal to the upside does actually happen, then what's gonna happen is the S&P is gonna retest the all-time highs and the Dow Jones as well, potentially passing them until we get back up to this level for the Nasdaq, which is, I'm looking at ETF QQQ, currently closed at $487 dollars and some change and this level dating depends on when we hit it so the longer we take the higher the high will be and right now we're looking at about 492 dollars and some change you also have to count for false breakouts because for example right about here it did break through it but came back underneath and clearly had resistance right about here the reason why i'm stating that potential there's a reversal to the upside right now i'm looking at etf i switched over just right now etf spy etf for the s p 500 same, same thing with upward trend resist line dating back since 2010 except did not pass it but the reason why i'm stating again the potential upside is because for the S&P, we do have room to go to the upside. Mind you, there was times we were in the middle and King got pulled back down. But if you look at the one year chart, like I shared in the last video in the pre prior video, it looked like the S&P and Dow Jones were in the bearish movement commitment to the downside potentially, but we're seeing a potential reversal to the upside. And if that is the case with the more room to grow, plus the momentum of the five year charts for the Dow Jones, NASDAQ and S&P showing potential continuation to the upside because the S&P and Dow Jones, I'll double check the NASDAQ, but I, I don't think that one's fully, fully committed yet, is they are strong bullish movement. So the one year chart to me is if it was continuing to the downside was potentially a small pullback or a small downside and then flip back up to go to show the continuation of the five year chart, which I'm gonna show soon. But either way, so we have the potential reversal to the upside for the S&P, potential reversal upside to the, for the Dow Jones as well. And what that will happen is they'll retest their previous all-time highs, which was at the end of September, 2024. So retest the all-time highs, and then to be honest, probably pass them for the S&P and Dow Jones. So here's the S&P again, SPY ETF for S&P 500. Retest the all-time highs that we just had at the end of September and potentially pass them because they're so close. And then in the NASDAQ, the only things that would be happening is, by the way, here's the one-year chart, MAC line, was potentially gonna cross over to the bearish movement. It's the only one that did not follow, for example, the Dow Jones S&P one-year chart um, in terms of MAC line. They were in the bearish movement. This one was in the bullish movement, potentially about to cross over to the bearish movement, but it still reversed the upside and continues the bullish movement. So technically, it really wants to test this 2010 level and then potentially break through it, which technically, if you look at the five-year chart, it might commit to it. And I'm going to show that soon. Now, uh, in, ter in terms of, um, the, like I said, one-year chart, the NASDAQ first commitment versus the S&P and Dow Jones all-time highs testing because the NASDAQ's all-time highs was back in July and did not pass it like the S&P and Dow, Dow Jones did would be to test this 2010 level and then potentially 
um, pass it. Again, that level, once again, is 492 and some change. Now, in terms of the five-year chart, the reason I stated that predominantly the movement will be to the upside after that small potential pullback, which uh, potentially could not, might not happen because again, there is tensions in the Middle East that could reverse it back down to the downside and then we'll get pulled down slightly and then continue on the track of the five-year chart, which is bullish movement. So here's the MAC line, bear, um, S and, uh, SPY, ETF for S&P 500 showing continuation to the upside because it's in the bullish trend for the five-year chart. The Dow Jones is pretty much the strongest one out of all of them. Five-year chart, bullish movement, so showing full strength. Mind you, all of them for the all chart are the exact same thing, basically, for the most part. They're all in the bullish movement, and the market tends to go up anyway, so I would almost disregard that for now. And then the NASDAQ is the one that's the only one that's lagging a little bit. More of a reason why maybe we might not even test the July all-time high, and more for the fact that we're going to be testing the 2010 and probably just for example, if I zoom out right about here, you can see back in the day, the market was still going up, but staying underneath the upward trend, res uh, upward trend resistance line dating back since 2010. We might have the same thing, right? Where it cr it crossed over to a bullish movement, but might not be strong enough to cross the past of 2010, or 2024 July all-time high um, exactly directly and just going straight up. More so, it'll pass it just slowly, gradually going up this upward trend resistance line where the market's still going higher. So for example, uh, horizontally, you could see right about here at like a uh, random time frame, saying end of December, if we were just continuing, by the way, these dates might not be exact, to, to be honest, I wouldn't rely on this date, but let's say by December, we'll be testing the level of the all-time high back in July and then passing it. So probably by the end of December, we'll pass all-time high naturally, even though we're going up on this upward trend resistance line and still staying underneath the whole entire time, right? So there's that, and that could potentially happen if the momentum is not strong enough to the upside. And that reminds me, so for the one month, three month, and six month MAC lines, I looked at all of them just to quickly say, state it. The Dow Jones is showing upside. So potentially for Monday, upside for the Dow Jones, it looks like, to be honest. And then for the S&P and NASDAQ, it's showing somewhat upside, but it almost shows kind of a flat and then later on upside into the day. It could get pulled down, but uh, because it's not as strong as the Dow Jones, but I think because the Dow Jones is showing clear indications of the upside and it's 30 large companies versus the rest of them, I know it's more companies, but I think the narrative, not narrative, but the market might be going up to the upside, even even though the one month, three months, six months for the S&P and NASDAQ are kind of showing somewhat of a flat day, um, I think it'll just get pulled up to the upside regardless. More for the fact that the market wants to reverse the upside too when we see it in terms of the MAC line for the one year chart. But that's basically it for today's video. If you did like it, consider dropping a like. It does help help out the channel. So thank you so much for that. I do appreciate it. If you want to be notified when I do upload my next videos, consider following, subscribing to so be notified when I do. Thanks again for watching. Take care. God bless and peace.